Hey, hey, Cub fans. Thanks for joining us here on Cubs 24-7, where Randy talks Cubs. I've got a big show today. At least I feel like I do. We have the uh, the Cubs and the Brewers play today. Lost to the Brewers 7-4. to But in that game, there's a couple pieces of good news, and I'll share those with you. And we'll walk through, and I'll do a full recap. But I also have some news roster-wise. There were some decisions made. And uh, I just kind of want to walk us through it, do a little bit of a reset because the opening day lineup and sort of the plan moving forward is starting to come together. There's still some puzzle pieces that we need to put in place, but it's starting to become more of a clear picture. So uh, stick around till the end. I'll walk us through that and just sort of get us up to date. So Cubs lost to the Brewers today, 7-4. to four. Two bright spots for me, Ben Brown. Uh, pitched went four innings and looked really good and so he's sort of a, a puzzle piece in that uh, in the pitching staff that we'll talk about when we get to the roster but Ben Brown looked really good and guys Nico Horner broke out today uh, he went two for three uh, and hit the ball hard had a ringing opposite field gap triple for an RBI and you know the the whole discussion that I have with even friends of mine specifically around Nico, is, Randy, you're getting too upset. It's, it's just spring training. Nobody cares. And my stance is, I know nobody cares. Nico cares. And to me, it's like he's been struggling. You can see it. He's, he's been trying to search for it. And his uh, triple today, you could, you, you could sort of see his body language where he's like, okay, okay, I'm back. You, I, it, was, it was almost palpable how – Nico Horner hit that that triple and scored a run. He finally drilled one, and he was on it. And you could see it. And and my stance is I know it's spring training, but you're still hitting. If you're playing wiffle ball in your backyard and you're you're not hitting well, you're not going to like it. I know it doesn't matter what you do in your backyard, but these guys are hitting, and it's a live at bat against a major league pitcher. And if they're not feeling good and they're not having success, that has to weigh on your mind. So the best news of today's 7-4 to four loss uh, to me is, one, Ben Brown looked really good, and I feel like Nico Horner turned the corner. And uh, I'm glad he did it. I'm glad we didn't get through spring training. You have to show up uh, opening day uh, in Texas and still have his confidence sort of shaken. So that's the good news. So let's go through the, the sort of the recap. Uh, Nico started playing second base. Say was in right field, hitting second. Belly started in center field, hitting third. Christopher Morrell, uh, third base, hitting fourth. Dansby at shortstop, hitting fifth. Michael Bush was at first base, hitting sixth. Jan Gomes catching, hitting seventh. Had Talkman in left, hitting eighth. Miguel Amaya got a start at DH today, uh, hitting ninth. And it was another, it wasn't a good offensive uh, outing for the. Uh, for the the main guys, um, we only had three hits. Nico had two, uh, and uh, Bush had one, and that was all the hits the starters had. So they they didn't really do much. Uh, so Nico went two for three. Say went zero for three, and Belly went zero for three. Christopher Morrell went zero for three. Uh, Dansby went zero for three. Bush had the one hit. He went he went one for two. Gomes was 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Talk was 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. And uh, Amaya uh, was 0 for 2 with a walk. So our last few games, are we haven't been doing much offensively. So that's why I said the, the one good piece was at least Nico broke out. Had this been the same case and I had to tell you Nico went 0 for 3 again, I, I, that wouldn't have been good. So... Nico breaking out of it hopefully kind of kickstarts him, but we, we've been a little been in a little bit of a funk here offensively. We did score uh, four runs. Here's how it happened. We scored one in the fifth inning when Amaya had a two-out walk, and then Nico followed it with his uh, two-out line drive triple to right center, um, scoring Amaya. We got another run in the eighth inning. Jonathan Long singled to right, and Ezekiel Pagan, uh, turned on one and drills one down the right field line for a run scoring triple uh, long scores and then we got a couple in the ninth Jake Slaughter hit a solid line drive single and Joe Hudson followed that up with a a, a big flight to center for a two-run bomb 
So we got uh, one in the fifth, one in the eighth, and then two in the ninth. And um, a lot of the – Jonathan Long got in at bat. Pagan got the at bat. Jacob Wetzel got in at bat. Hayden Cantrell, Juan Mora, Jake Slaughter, uh, Joe Hudson, Darius Hill, Orhea hey, Afalo, uh, Alfaro came in and struck out. And Parker Chavers ended the game with a line out to the shortstop. So a lot of guys played. And, again, sort of anemic, um, you know, just not much. So uh, we'll see what happens. It looks like Saya has cooled down. His numbers are kind of falling back to where you expect they, they would. So I think the next um, – the, the rest of the weekend and the first uh, couple days of next week before we break camp, I, I'd like to see us get a little hotter than we have been. So we had seven hits, walked three times, and struck out six times. Um, Pitching-wise, Ben Brown, back to Ben. Ben started and went four innings, gave up two hits, struck out three, and walked one. And he just really looked good. And the the reason I think Ben Brown looked good, first of all, he's a big, lanky guy, and he throws hard. And he, he's kind of fun to watch throw. He's the kind of guy that you watch pitch, and you don't all you see is his wind-up and his motion. He's long and got long levers, but he's still under control. It's very, it's it's uh, very satisfying to watch him throw. Ball comes out of his hand nice and easy, but he throws hard and he's got movement on that fastball. So he's basically fastball curveball, and he had the one walk, but for the most part he was he was near the strike zone. So I just sort of noticed he was fastball curveball, but he would change his curveball up from a. A strike to ball curveball and a ball to strike curveball and then sort of get the hitter looking for one of those and then that heater comes in with just enough movement he was a handful today Ben Brown looks good Yancey came in pitched the fifth Yancey Almonte had a really good inning uh, had a strikeout Keegan Thompson came in pitched the sixth gave up a home run so Keegan gave up a run in the sixth and then Daniel Palencia had a really bad seventh uh, ended up, I think his pitch count got up to around 30, and he only got two outs in the seventh. So he pitches two-thirds of an inning, gives up four hits, a walk, and five runs. So uh, Palencia had sort of a rough outing. He lost his command. He was kind of all over the place. The worst I've seen Daniel uh, this spring. Blake Whitney came in, uh, pitched the, uh, got the third out in the seventh. He did give up a hit and uh, struck out his uh, guy to get the out. Richard Lovelady came in and pitched the eighth. He gave up a hit, a walk, and a strikeout, no runs. And then uh, Blake Wyman pitched the ninth, uh, gave up one hit, and gave up a run. So they got a uh, gave up an extra run in the ninth did Blake Wyman. So fun day, though. Uh, 16,118 in attendance at Sloan Park. Crowd was huge. Cubs have now dropped on the spring to 16 and 13. And... Um, so that's that's sort of what happened today. Let's talk a little bit about sort of the roster moves. I've actually been debating in my mind uh, over the last couple of hours while I was watching the Cub game to uh, decide kind of how, how I want to approach this. So I really haven't decided. So let me just see how it goes. Uh, first thing I want you to know is uh, Garrett Cooper has been informed that he has made the opening day roster. So Cooper is uh, uh, going to be with the Cubs on opening day. And what's how that fits is you go, well, he's DH, he's a right-handed hitter, he's got power, he's been an all-star. So he's sort of, I'll describe him as that professional hitter that a lot of guys were talking about that we needed as a DH. Um, so I think he fills that role. He also fits in as a left uh, or a um, right-handing hitting first baseman to contrast Michael Bush. So I don't, I don't know what they're thinking. I'm just saying Cooper plays first base. He can play some outfield. He's a professional hitter. He can DH. Uh, as opposed to Dom Smith, who is another left-handed hitting first baseman. Well, we've got Bush. So Bush and Dom, it, I, don't, I couldn't see us having both of those. So it sort of makes sense that uh, Michael Cooper is, uh, has made the team. But the situation is, as you recall, Michael Cooper is a uh, non-roster invitee, which means there has to be a, a change on the 40-man roster. So that was um, an issue with Cooper making the team that's been in the back of my mind. So I mentioned Dom. Uh, he has opted out of his uh, his minor league contract. So Dom is, for all intents and purposes, he is, he's gone. And Carl Edwards Jr. did the same. So, uh, you know, I've been, I was rooting for Carl. 
but uh, when he was informed he wasn't going to make the opening day roster, he just opted out. That's what Dom did too. So I'm going to suggest that Dom and Carl will get picked up by another major league team. That's sort of my thoughts. I mean, they were real close to making this Cub team, and under different circumstances they probably both would have. Um, and I don't blame them for opting out. They're like, no, we're not We're not just going to hang around. We're going to go uh, opt out of the contract. They're, they're free agents again. So we'll, we'll kind of follow them. So I'll be interested to see what happens. Um, David Peralta. Uh, is going to be staying behind in Arizona when the Cubs break camp. And the reason he's staying behind is, you know, he had surgery on his uh, on his left elbow back in October, and he's still sort of rehabbing that. So he's going to stay back in Arizona to continue his throwing program to ramp himself up to being able to play uh, outfield here at some point. So keep in the back of your mind that Peralta is staying in Arizona, still rehabbing, uh, getting ready to play. So he's sort of in the bank. Good news with Justin Steele, uh, for all the reports, uh, Justin Steele is still in line to start on opening day. So um, that's very good news. We got that uh, a quote from Council. Uh, Steele did an interview saying the same thing. He's a little sore, but it's just an exterior contusion, nothing structural. So he believes he's going to be fine. We got injury reports. So here's our situation. We've got... Um, Let's do, let's just go ahead and take a deep breath. I want to walk through the roster. So let's do the, the everyday players. I'm going to give you this list. And this list is a list of the guys who, uh, in my mind right now, are on the team. Okay, So it's Morrell, it's Suzuki, it's Bellinger, it's Dansby, Gomes, Amaya, Nico, Hap, Bush, Talkman, and Cooper. Now that's 11. So, who's the other two? Well, here's your, your, your group that we can choose from. You got Miles Master Boney, you got Alexander Canario, you've got Nick Madrigal, and you've got Patrick Wisdom. But Nick Madrigal and Patrick Wisdom, it doesn't look like they're going to be ready. Uh, I know for sure that Wisdom is not. He's going to start the season on the uh, injured reserve. And Madrigal has, what's he played? One or two games he hasn't even played. So we can, in my mind, unless something really changes, we can take Madrigal and Wizzy and put them sort of on the IL, which to me, with Peralta staying back in Arizona, to me it looks like Miles Master Boney and Alexander Canario are going to be on the opening day roster. And I think that's kind of where we are. Now, in this group, we have to be t talking about flexibility, and with flexibility means who do we have that we can option up and down as needed. So in the group that I just listed for you, Canario, Master Boney, Madrigal, and Wisdom all have options. So those four guys uh, are make us flexible that we can uh, send, pe send pe people down, send people up. So I'm just thinking that's probably it. Uh, you know, I haven't gotten the, the official news that Master Boney and Canario have made it. But to me, looking at who's, who's left, that's what makes the most sense. Some similar issues on the staff. So let's go through that. I'm going to give you nine pitchers that I, I'm going to consider they're definitely on. And that's, um, well, first of all, you got your starters. So you've got Javier Assad, Kyle Hendricks, Shota Imananga. Um, Steele and Jordan Wicks, and then you've got Alzali, you've got um, Mark Leiter Jr., Julian Merriweather, and Hector Neris. So that group right there, nine pitchers who I think are are there. Now keeping in mind that Jamison Tyone is going to start the season on the injured reserve, so he's out. They're targeting him mid-April. So at least a couple, three weeks into the season before JMO is, is right. So with that, those nine guys, uh, that leaves us with options. So let's walk through those. I've got uh, four of these guys that we need, and I've got five options. I've got Yancy Almonte, Luke Little, Drew Smiley, Hayden Wesneski, and Jose Quas. So we've got nine that are definites. Uh, we're looking for four more. And to help us make that decision, 
two of the, the pitchers in this group that I just mentioned have options. And to me, that is probably could be the deciding factor. And those two uh, pitchers are Luke Little and Hayden Wesneski. So if you go, well, I need, you got Yancey, Luke, Smiley, Wesneski, and Quas, And we, we're going to pick four of them. So which one of those doesn't make it? And to me, it's either going to be Luke or Wesneski because they have options. So when we're dealing with the staff, we can talk about our 13 that we're going to have on the active roster, but we're going to have probably five or six guys in the, you know, sort of uh, in the hole, ready to go, that are going to be coming up. I think we start the season thinking we've got 18 or 20 pitchers that are going to pitch for us during the season, and they're just going to be rotated up and down. Uh, and so when Tyone comes back, you add that. And then uh, based on what I saw and heard today, Ben Brown uh, is going to be pitching for the Cubs uh, soon. So if, you, if we start talking about that whole group, we can count those up. That gives us 16 pitchers that are theoretically uh, in the mix to pitch for us here, uh, you know, in the first month, two months of the season. So, you know, it's starting to look, it's tar- starting to take shape. I think that's kind of where we are. Um, we'll get news here in the next probably day or two of the final uh, roster, but that's that's where we stand. This is, I think, this is everything I know about it. So I just I wanted to share that with you to get us all on the same page. So that's the update. Hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you guys checking me out here on Cubs 24-7 where Randy talks Cubs. And we'll see you tomorrow. Go Cubs, go.